Hi, welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to the technical talks with Neeraj. Today we are talking about uh, what is testing and why testing is really important. So starting from the very first thing is understanding on what exactly testing is all about. Testing is having a lot of parameters to be defined at any point of time. When you talk about uh, dealing with uh, you know, any such component, any such product which you're making, it has to be tested. And when you talk about in more detail of what exactly is testing, of course, the testing is to meet the requirements, to define the quality, or maybe to enhance the quality. And to a certain extent, we generally do not have a precise definition to be added as a part of what is definitely, you know, testing all about. So when it comes to testing definition, we generally have certain objectives to be defined as a part of it. So generally, we have four major objectives of testing. It is to obviously find defects in the product. Second is to gain confidence about the product. Also to provide information to the other stakeholders for any kind of decision making. And also to a certain extent, it is to prevent the defects. Now it's like, you know, let me understand, let me make you understand about like what these objectives are. Of course, by creating different test cases and executing them on the applications, you try to find defects. And by finding these defects, you minimize those defects in the production so that you really don't have to, you know, showcase those to your end users and your end users can be really satisfied with the product. And today we are talking about an era where the technology has been, you know, moving towards more complexity, more criticality, dealing with such applications where the things can go wrong at many points. So our testing team need to be really very skilled at this point of time and be sure with their technical understanding towards the product. So finding defects really help you to minimize those things within us, like when it is under development or when it is under testing and before it reaches to the market. Because if in case you have this products having going fail or having defects in the end user premises, then of course it would be a really big failure for the organization or maybe to a certain extent the entire product failure as well which will be very expensive to recover. The second thing is talking about the, you know, providing information to other stakeholders is to also understand to a certain extent that there is a testing team who has been interacting with the application for a long time. Like, you know, when interacting with writing test cases or preparing certain test scenarios, uh, you know, supporting with certain set of test data and trying to make sure that these things are working fine as per the requirement, of course. So, of course, these uh, executions will give them information that how much we have tested and how much more we need to test. So, of course, as we proceed with these kind of things, we make sure that is there anything else remaining from our side, maybe in terms of residual risk, in terms of remaining defects or the defects which are still open. So, of course, these things play a vital role and the other managements say for example the development manager or the te test manager including the project manager depending on the schedules may ask you certain questions at this point of time to be answered so that uh, they can make necessary decisions that do we have enough time to continue testing or is it that we are moving towards the deadline are you done with your testing so that we can uh, go ahead with releasing of the product or not so this this generally deals with you know providing information to the different stakeholders who would be relying on you being a test engineer of the organization. Gaining confidence, of course, is another way when you say like uh, the team, you being the tester or the test team have been interacting with the application, then by executing certain number of test cases with different scenarios, different conditions, you would have gained certain confidence. Now, these confidence can be from, you know, the number of test cases what you have prepared, number of severe risk which you have encountered and covered, or maybe the, uh, the scenarios which you tried with a certain set of test data, or what kind of you know experience-based techniques you would have applied, and many other things which would give you a kind of confidence being a test user that, okay, fine, this product can be released as of now to the market and it will sustain. That means it won't have the major failures happening into the market. The last thing is, of course, about preventing defects. That is to make sure the product the, like the product can be initially saved from defects being introduced. So this can be done by one of the principle as well of testing, which we call it as early testing, where we recommend the test team or the testers must be invited at as early as possible 
to review the documentation. So generally when it comes to requirement documentation or any such uh, brief or detailed, it can be concrete, it can be logical, it can be a workflow, it can be a design, it can be a static code or it can be the requirements. Any such document which is being prepared or any such work product which is being prepared must be uh, reviewed by the test engineers just to make sure that because these people are the one who will be taking a, taking care of the product on the other side by validating the requirements. So the validating the functionalities and other key features of the application. So if in case we can really invite them at an early stage where they can really contribute in terms of uh, uh, making sure that they are clear with the requirement, the requirement has all necessary information, they have all uh, details to validate it. It can be also from the point of developer when they gather together in terms of psychological aspects where they can merge together with the other stakeholders and create that understanding within them so that everyone has that common understanding of these requirements and details of the requirements and further they can very well coordinate if in case there are any defects. So by conducting reviews generally we say that the testers can prevent the defects from being introduced into the design and code. So when it comes to uh, the review conduction, we have different types of review which we'll see in upcoming videos. But as of now, this is what is like we talk about in terms of preventing. So at the end, we say that preventing defects could involve the testers as early as the drafts of the documents are available in the lifecycle model. So this is what is from what is testing. We'll be continuing further with the uh, any other topic when we talk about testing. So stay tuned for upcoming videos on the technical talks with Neeraj. I'll be talking initially with the testing terms. Uh, later we'll be coming with other modules like working with Agile and so on. All I would need is stay tuned and keep understanding the context and happy learning. Take care team.